Hi, this is Dr. Roy Kim, and I'm going to be talking to you about the basics about breast lift. As we age, or if we've had a lot of children, or thanks to milk production or lactation, sometimes your breasts get sort of full, and then as time goes on, you stop lactating or producing milk, and you may notice the breasts start to sag a little, and this is completely normal. Now, having said that, there are ways to address this problem, and I'm going to be talking about the various surgical techniques that we do this. Having said that, the surgical incisions really depend on how much lift you need. We will rely on numerical amounts as well as sort of what your body needs overall, but this is why the incisions sort of vary mildly. Now, in terms of the first thing, actually just breast augmentation may help. If you feel that you have sort of loose breast tissue, but mainly at the top of your breast above the nipple areola complex, then you may only need breast augmentation. We can achieve this with the breast implant, we can achieve this with fat, and this will mildly elevate the nipple into a better position. This also implies that the nipple is above the breast fold before surgery. Now in terms of anatomy, when do you really need a breast lift? Really you need it if the nipple is at or below your breast fold. Even if it's barely above it, sometimes aesthetically it doesn't look beautiful. We want the nipple and the areola to be actually in the middle of your breast, which most plastic surgeons think is the most aesthetic. It does look a little more natural if it sort of sags gently. But when I say sag, I think that as a plastic surgeon, it doesn't sag that much to be honest. It just drapes nicely. It's not like a round ball, but rather it's a gentle slope. And I think that's what most patients want as well. Now, in terms of the first type of breast lift, I do think that it is the Benelli mastopexy or donut mastopexy. In other words, the long-term incision really just looks like a donut, an incision around the areola. There are a couple of advantages of this, which include that we can lift the breast with sort of the minimum scar possible. A lot of patients who have an enlarged areola were able to actually make a small incision that is difficult and impossible to see, and it's around a smaller or more normal size areola diameter. It does generate lift very nicely, but there are some issues with it. It doesn't necessarily give you the best shape. It tends to be a little flat around the nipple area. That's not a big deal if it's a small amount of lift, but if you need a large amount of lift, it does look slightly odd sometimes. The other thing is I sort of alluded to, it doesn't really lift the nipple up that much. More specifically, I can usually get one to two inches, which is about, you know, like two to five centimeters of lift, you know, going up that way towards the collarbone. A little more than that, technically it's possible. However, the actual circle tends to look like an oval at the end of surgery or long-term. Also, it tend to sort of widen if there's too much lift. This is why it's not a very common procedure because most patients need more than one or two inches of lift up towards that direction. Talk to your plastic surgeon about it. Look at yourself critically in the mirror if needed. But yeah, if you need more than one to two inches of lift for the nipple areola complex, the NAC, then yeah, you're probably not gonna be a candidate, unfortunately, for the donut mastopexy. The most common way, I think, of doing a breast lift in the US is a lollipop incision, a vertical mastopexy. What that means is I have to make some type of incision, we call it a keyhole incision, but we need something that looks sort of like a keyhole on your skin. And we can actually lift it up in that direction. You can get an implant, you can get fat to actually have a filler material, you can choose to get no filler material at all, but that breast lift is more common because it's allowing us as plastic surgeons to generate more lift, in other words, more direction upwards towards your collarbone. And it also internally allows me as a plastic surgeon to actually reshape your breasts. I can actually sort of reposition your internal breast tissue and other tissues so that it is more full at the top of your breast. The most common way of doing a breast lift is actually an incision that is identical to breast reduction. We call it the upside down T incision, also known as an anchor incision, because that's really what it looks like. You have an incision around your areola, an incision that goes up and, up and down, just like a lollipop, but there's an incision that goes horizontal. It is in the new breast fold. The reason why we make it that way is because these are patients who need a lot of lift. In theory, I can make a lollipop incision longer and longer and longer. However, aesthetically, nobody thinks that an up and down incision over your rib cage looks that beautiful. What we do is instead of making it go up and down, once we hit the new breast fold, we actually make it go horizontal. And that's why it does look like the upside down letter T, and it can look like an anchor, although we're not really nautical people for the most part anymore. Why is this so important? Because I can actually also reposition the internal breast tissue. I can actually give you a beautiful looking scar 
because a lot of it's hidden in the horizontal portion. And for patients who have a lot of need for breast lifting, that is the best option. Now, in terms of filler material, yes, if you in general have larger breasts in terms of volume, or you don't mind losing about half a cup to a cup size, I would only stick to a breast lift. You'd really probably do not need any filler material, specifically fat or breast implant or a combination of both to get the volume that you need. If you feel you're already a little small, you're a little deflated, which is what I hear from many patients, then yes, you need an implant or fat grafting or a combination of both to give you the volume that you want. Now, in terms of the implant, we can place it under the muscle, we can place it above the muscle, but under the fascia, we can actually place it just right underneath the breast tissue, above the muscle and above the fascia. The two most common places are, of course, under the muscle as well as above the muscle, but under the muscle fascia. Having said that, we do have to tailor the breast implants in terms of your breast width your overall height, as well as width of your own body, and finally how prominent, sort of far away you want it from your chest or not. I have a completely different video up here of how the best breast implant profile will work for you. Now, in terms of long-term results, the other important factor is how much volume you already have. This is a common problem with patients who really want larger volume, long-term results. If you already have larger breasts and you want to have a breast reduction or just want to have a breast lift, I don't think it's a huge issue, but we can actually support the lower portion of your breast with what we call an internal bra. If you have a heavier breast implant or simply want the best results possible, I would definitely urge you to get an internal bra. The internal bra is usually man-made material. Now there's another option made from sheep material where I can create sort of a sling or hammock for your breast implant or your own breast tissue. And that way, long-term, it actually supports it. Short-term, you won't notice a difference. And to be honest, short-term as a plastic surgeon, I don't notice a difference. Short-term, all these patients, they look great. They're very happy. And obviously we just did surgery a month ago, a couple weeks ago, and it's supported. Really the internal bra is very useful for patients six months, 12 months, several years down the road, where it definitely helps to give support and it helps to keep the overall breast shape up, like towards the collarbone area and prevents it from sagging, what we call recurrent ptosis, P-T-O-S-I-S. -S. That is why the internal bra is a wonderful new concept and will give you sort of longevity, like better long-term results. As a surgeon, it's a wonderful tool. It doesn't take that much longer to place in the operating room. It's not that much in terms of cost. If you have the need for a breast lift and an implant, I would strongly encourage you to at least consider it, if not discuss it with your plastic surgeon. In terms of breast lift in general, it's an outpatient procedure. You come in, have the surgery, go home. Depending on your operation, of course, your medical health and your plastic surgeon, this will take us several hours to do the actual operation. You will probably be given pain medicine and probably numbing medication, which helps with the long-term overall pain control of your breast lift. I would expect you to take one to two weeks off of work. Remember, it does take six to 12 months for all the swelling to go down and all the healing to occur. I think one of the critical phases is right after surgery where, hey, we are having all new skin growing in, but we want you to take care of your scars for the next six to 12 months after your operation. The breast implants or fullness or even fat grafting may be a little too full right after surgery. Don't be grumpy or sad about it. The swelling quickly goes away. Your plastic surgeon may discuss with you things about breast implant massage, anti azo medications to help prevent capsular contracture and other issues if you get a breast implant. With fat grafting, the assumption of course is that you have a decent amount of liposuction done and you need to take care of those areas right after surgery so that you can heal faster. With the internal bra technology and sort of refinement of our surgical procedures, I do think that we're able to get better results than 20 or 30 years ago and certainly longer lasting results. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions generically about breast lift, please let me know and I look forward to the next video. And of course, if you're interested in other videos, here's some right next to my hand that you can watch here on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching.